When an autoflower pops out of the ground, it looks like any other cannabis plant. It's uh, very small, and what happens sometimes is your shells will be stuck on the leaves, and it'll have a husk around it. Uh, it'll like it will keep it closed like this and sometimes until you help that husk off by just slowly pinching it, not like pinching the leaf but just slowly rubbing it off like that and the leaves will literally pop open this is a day one plant uh, looks healthy Kind of weird looking leaves, but after you take the husk off, it will start growing. These are what I like to use as a T5. Uh, they're very handy. They got really high output on lumens. Uh, I think these ones put out like 4,000 lumens or something, which is a lot higher than the curly bulbs. Or I think it's 5,000, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, they're really low on power. Uh, you can buy them at your local garden store. And also, another really good tip, if you are you choose to only grow feminized seeds, uh, feminized seeds don't really like uh, red spectrum when they're babies. It can turn them into uh, Hermes. So, my suggestion is only use blue spectrum till they sh show sex and then that's when you want to switch to the H IDs or uh, HPSs but if you're only using regular seeds then you can just go ahead and use a uh, high pressure sodium and some supplemental blue spectrum from the, these babies. When you're choosing pots for our flowers, best idea is to go with a three gallon pot. Uh, I prefer these tougher, tougher plastic, thicker ones. Uh, you can get these uh, thinner ones. They're a bit cheaper sometimes, but not too keen on the flimsiness of them when you need to pick them up and shit with one hand so there's a downside there but three gallons is the best one I found with uh, size limitations and uh, for growth and shit but yeah I've seen uh, a lot better autos with bigger pots though uh, they actually like taller pots uh, so if you can get a four gallon, those are really nice, or five gallons, which are really nice. But pretty much the bigger the better. So it's up to you and uh, your size restrictions, and uh, just try to choose on that. As you can see here, the Promex HP is a very, very light uh, soilless mix. Uh, the roots have very easy access to grow through them. Uh, there's not many uh, uh, dry pockets I've noticed so it's pretty good but the only downside I've noticed with it is uh, it's kind of really dusty so yeah dust buildup is kind of a problem when you use this stuff so if I could use cocoa core uh, that's pretty much what I do but not really have access to it right now so gotta use what I got so if you're an area where you can get it I'd choose cocoa and perlite and uh, add about I like to add uh, about one tablespoon of dolomite lime to each one of these buckets when I'm filling it up and mix it all up also, when filling your buckets up, uh, it's best to 
film to about this height or maybe maybe up to about here but you don't want to fill it all the way up to the top because it'll have some problems when you're watering so I'd say right here is perfect but you don't want to go any lower than this because what will happen is all the leaves will fucking grow out and touch all the sides and shit and get all the bugs on the sides and get dirty and you don't want dirty bugs. So what I prefer to use is uh, Promix HP. It's a uh, soilless mix, perlades, uh, moss, uh, a bunch of other stuff. And uh, actually, I've noticed that this stuff uh, changes in pH after you water it. And I did a little research, and uh, it says on their website that after its first watering, it goes from 5.6 pH to uh, around 6.2 to 6.4, which is pretty perfect for all flowers. But you gotta remember that you gotta fully saturate your soilless mix before, uh, like while you first plant, or maybe even a week before you plant. So when you do plant, it's great pH. Around day two is when the first set of true leaves start coming out of all the flowers. The cotyledons are these, and those are what help the seedlings start producing the actual real uh, leaves. And at this time, around day two and three, it pretty much looks like any other cannabis plant. Uh, just slow steady growth nothing too rapid or crazy but as we go on you'll see what happens at this point of their growth at day one and day two uh, these autoflowers need nothing but water ph water and low ppms is what you need what you want to grow under would be uh, uh, HIDs, uh, most likely HPS, high pressure sodium, and uh, if you could, it would be really good if you can get blue spectrum in there, maybe some uh, supplemental CFLs or uh, <clears throat> T5s. Uh, it really helps during the vegetative growth. And at this stage, they're best grown under 20 hours on and 4 hours off. That's what uh, autoflowers like best. Um, if you are worried about electricity costs, you can do 18 hours on, but it's uh, very much recommended that you do 20 on and 4 off. Make sure you keep the temperature at a good 75 Fahrenheit to 78 Fahrenheit. Uh, make sure you don't go over 85 Fahrenheit because it will slow and can even stop your growth and really fuck up your shit. Airflow is key. Make sure you have good fans, good carbon filters. Make sure you take the stink out because that's what makes you get busted. And remember, autoflowers do not like transplanting. Make sure you plant them in the buckets they are going to end up in. And if that means you need to put two in one bucket and weed out the mail, then that's what you got to do. But it's just a bad idea to have them in small little pots and then transfer them because it will stunt them. And you will lose about half what you could have had. Also make sure you have a fan blowing on these guys. Nothing powerful or anything, just a nice breeze to have them 
you know, moving all the time. Because what that does is uh, builds up their stem strength and makes them nice and strong and sturdy so they don't fucking just grow up tall and fall over. Don't want that. At day 10, you can see the growth is really starting to pick up a little bit faster than regular plants do. Uh, it's got some nice indica leaves on it, you can tell. Fat, fat leaves, and indica. So it's probably going to be a nice short, well not necessarily, necessarily short, but uh, pretty bushy. And uh, not lanky really. Um, when they start getting this old, that's when you can start moving the light down. They can start handling more light. Uh, still just only give them water. Straight water, pH, low ppm. Make sure when you lower in the light, look for uh, leaf tips flaring up. They're starting to go up high like this and curve inwards. And that means you're having a heat problem and you may be having some heat stress. And you may need to either cool your plants off a lot more or you need to raise your light up a little bit but necessarily it's, it's a 400 watt light you'd want to start it at about uh, three feet away for uh, 250 watt you'd want to start it at about two feet away and you slowly just move it down every day uh, keep watching for the heat stress and light stress um, it's kind of a fine line if there's a sweet spot for all plants and you just gotta find it and do a little experimenting and um, troubleshooting and you'll find it by this time at about day 10 day 11 uh, 400 watts should be around let me say a foot and six inches maybe or a foot and four inches and at about day 14 is when you want it to be about a foot and two inches or possibly a foot if you have really good airflow. From day 14 to around day 18 growth really starts exploding. You can tell autoflowers have a different vegetative state than uh, regular plants. It's really explosive, um, but short-lived. They start flowering right away, but their flower cycle kind of coincides with their veg cycle for about uh, three more weeks and they still just keep growing and growing and growing don't really start budding that much but they get a lot bigger and what happens at around day 14 to 18 you'll see some of those and those right there those Right there are male pollen sacs. Pretty small, they're just round little sacs like that. They have no white hairs coming out of them. That's how you can tell. And this. is a female. See the white hairs coming out of there? 
that it's female pistols. Which means it's a girl. I will produce buds. At around age 14 to 18 is when you would want your light to be at the maximum position. Uh, for 250 watt, it'd be about six to eight inches away. For a 400 watt, it'd be uh, a foot away. 600 watt, you'd want it round foot and six inches or so. But this is depending on how well you can cool your plants because you want to make sure all your plants are at 75 Fahrenheit or around 75 Fahrenheit to about 78 Fahrenheit. That's uh, the magic spot. Around day 14 to day 18 is when you want to start uh, feeding your veg and you want to start it at either a quarter uh, nutrients or a half what you would be giving uh, to normal plants uh, just try to take it slow with them because some of them can get burnt a bit easy but uh, I usually do it at a half newts or half what the bottle tells you to do and yeah it seems to go pretty nice but a little trick once they get to around day 14 to 18 they start shooting out these side shoots here and you got these big fan leaves in the way so what you want to do is just tuck them in real fucking easy bada bing bada boom take them tuck them in just like that and these will shoot upwards and these big families will be trained to stay below but still taking them lots of light so it maximizes your canopy and lets all your bud seeds get light and shoot up more and that's what you want if you want a nice big bushy plant and not have to top it or super crop it and yeah it'll turn into a big old bush Four weeks old, you can really see the button starting to happen. We're really starting to put on the hairs and the calyxes. We're really starting to bush up nicely. But sometimes some autos will grow up a lot taller than others. And when that happens, you may need to stake them down. But this is, is an actually an old uh, stem, of an old autoflower. And I just staked it down. Or what else you could do is tie it down, maybe poke some holes in here, tie it down with string. Uh, that's called an LST, low stress training. Uh, autoflowers do not. Uh, prefer high stress training which is uh, super cropping or topping uh, you don't really want to stress it and tying it down doesn't really stress at all you're just just pull it down to its uh, lowest point or wherever you really want it uh, without trying to right angle it and break it or whatever and what will happen is it's just start going back up and all these bottom ones will start shooting up too turn into a nice big bush and that's what you want but sometimes if uh, your light if you're using like a low watt light like a 250 watt or something that doesn't have great penetration you may need to take off the very little bottom buds forming because they're not really going to form into anything so yeah you, you probably want to take off the really lower stuff but uh, try to leave the medium stuff because the medium stuff usually gets some, some pretty nice size and weight to it so 
Another way of tying them down would be uh, you can tie a string all the way around this and then from that you can tie strings onto that and pull what parts down you want if you want to make huge bushes or whatever or if you really need to keep the the height really low that would be another good way and around day I'd say 22 to 25 or so is when they actually start stinking so you will want to have a carbon filter if you're in somewhere where you can't really be staked up the place, if you know what I mean. Or try to do some other kind of, maybe put up some incense or something, or yeah, try to mask the smell as much as you can. And another tip, just keep tucking leaves if you see buds coming up, uh, like this one was above this one before, you just tuck it in, and this bud right here will keep growing up, and if you ever see any more buds getting blocked by leaves, just tuck them in, and it helps them a lot. At around week four, you may want to try, after your first feeding of veg, uh, you may want to, the next feeding you do, try to do uh, half veg and half flower newts but this is for if you want to be chopping down at around week uh, eight or so because if you don't give them I'd say at least two veg uh, newt feedings they won't really go past longer than that depends on how much you feed them to I try to really give them a low amount, just what they need, but they sometimes tend to get really yellow around uh, week 9, week 10 if you want to take them that long, so if you want to take them that long to around week 10 I'd say give them two veg feedings and then switch over to flour. And you also want to make sure you leave the two week flush period. When feeding newts to auto flowers, you gotta make sure you're watching the tips. Because the tips are very big indicators on nutrients burn and their limits. As you can see, this little tiny, tiny tip, just a little tiny, tiny bit burnt. Meaning I'm just barely going over what they need. So they're just telling me, hey, we got enough. Try to maybe cut it back to the tiny, tiny bit. They'll be very happy. You can tell that they got lots of nitrogen if they're really nice and dark green. That's a good sign of that they got lots of newts. So you can cut back just a tiny bit if you want. But if you start getting nutrient burns going even going further than that, then you really want to think about cutting back or even possibly uh, doing a flush, uh, which is running water through the plant. Uh, you want to run about um, three to four times the amount of soil that's in the pot. So if it's a three gallon pot, you're going to want to run nine gallons to it which will take out all the salts and help it regulate and go back to a regular state also notice the crusty little bits here kind of looks like a rust almost and uh, that's a calamag deficiency uh, I've noticed a lot of autos seem to have that so they do like calamag so Make sure that's in your arsenal when you start growing autoflowers. And again, it is alright to remove these bottom nugs here, these little buds growing here, because they really don't amount to nothing really. So like the bottom quarter of the plant, it's alright to take those little nugs off because it'll help make all the top ones nice, more more dense and bigger and 
you'll get, you won't even really want to smoke these, so it's not really even worth leaving them on. Make sure when you're choosing your grow area that you have a area that fits your grow light. You want a uh, maximum of around 8,000 lumens per square foot and a minimum of 5,000 lumens per square foot. But you can go over it, over your maximum if you can keep, the, keep them cool and keep them happy. Make sure when you're choosing your grow area that you choose a well reflected area either white or have mylar in it so I suggest you guys get a tent if you're going to be growing in a small area and uh, yeah make sure you have a carbon filter one of these bad boys helps a lot with the smell it will help you not get busted and that is always a good thing Make sure your grower area fits your light. You need at least 5,000 lumens per square foot minimum. Here's a common deficiency that autoflowers normally get. Uh, it's not that regular, but it'll happen to you probably. It's a CalMag deficiency. So it'll be in your interest to get a bottle of CalMag to help you out on your grows. During weeks 5 and 6, you can really tell that they're putting on lots of weight really quickly. Every day you can almost see the progress. Nice fat buds. So when harvest time comes around, this is what you need. Magnifying glass. Uh, 30 times is usually good enough. But if you can get 50 or 6 times, that's fucking perfect and what you need. Uh, you can get one of these on eBay for like 5 bucks with the LED light and shit. And yeah, it's pretty cheap. So what you're looking for is uh, milky white trichomes or amber. And you're looking, depends on what kind of eye you want. If you want a body stone, you want amber trichomes around 25% uh, or more. If you want just head high, maybe uh, some clear and maybe 75% cloudy. Or if you just want a nice all around, just go all cloudy or cloudy and maybe 25% or yeah, around 20% or so amber. That's nice all around high. So when you're harvesting, there's different techniques you do. You could chop all the leaves off right now and maybe save the sure leaves. Or if you want to keep the smell down, just uh, what I like to do is just chop it right at the base, hang it up for till it's dry and then take the leaves off because it seems to not make it so stinky because it can sink up a block pretty much. So that's some of the basics on growing autoflowers. If you want to learn some more and get some more knowledge from other experienced growers then I'd suggest you head over to Autoflower Network and join up and uh, start sharing your experience with the community. So peace out guys.